Hello, welcome. Merlin's feeling a little bit fearful this morning. He doesn't want to take his eye mask off. He's feeling a little bit unsure about what is in front of him and he's a bit fearful of all the people watching him. Whether they're going to be nice or not to him. So let's see if we can get him to take his eye mask off throughout this story. So we're going to be talking about fear today and the story is about those feelings of fear. Um, our character today is Ronnie. Um, and there's Ronnie. Ronnie is a little bit fearful. We can find out what it's all about. Interestingly, this is a really big subject for me. I have, over the years, been very fearful from a very young age, as well as I spoke about being shy in another story. I was very, I'm, I'm still very fearful at times. I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a minute. Please, if you want to watch more of Merlin's Magical Storytime, please subscribe to my channel. Make sure you like and share the content. It is so vital to get the message out there for teachers, parents, and um, carers, grandparents, and importantly, the young people of today to help them to know that they're not alone and there is lots of support there, helping them with their emotional resilience, helping them to find ways to overcome their inner challenges. So we're gonna hopefully help Merlin to feel safe to uncover that mask. Um, and as I said, my fear started as a child. I had this feeling of, um, importantly, a simple thing like going on walking day. And I had the drums, the drums going, and it built fear in me, the sound, the vibration. I didn't enjoy walking day for the reason of, hated the feeling of the drums inside my tummy um, and it brought fear for me um, and it brought me to want to not do a lot of things so that fear was uh, withdrawing and going indoors to find my safe haven and so it's finding safe haven with these stories that help you to get back into society a little bit more I'll talk a bit more about me as we go along so Here's our character, we've got Ronnie. Let's get going today. Everyone feel, feels fear sometimes. You may have a fear of snakes, thunderstorms, scary movies, or even something imagined. Fear makes your heart beat faster and your muscles tense, preparing you for fight to fight off the danger or run away from it. As we get older, we learn to calm our fears by understanding the level of danger we face. But sometimes, like Ronnie, we develop a fear of something which starts to cause us problems in everyday lives. Ronnie has never been bitten by a dog or even growled at by one, but he was sure that every dog was just waiting for a chance to attack him. He wished he was braver, but even the smallest dog left him left dog made his legs turn to jelly oh hold my hand up there I totally resonate big Doberman dogs I used to be so fearful of and being a child some dogs are bigger than children and I was very fearful of dogs and I spoke about this in another story where I sat on my mum's knee and I was scared of the dog I was fearful of the dog in the room even though I was in someone's house these are the things we don't know what's going to happen next. It's that change, it's that anticipation, that unknowing. So where is Ronnie? Ronnie is he's in a caravan. He's got the washing out. Let's see what is happening here. I live with my mum in a caravan by the sea. It would be the best place in the world if it wasn't for the dogs. Everyone seems to have a dog except for us. Because I've been really fearful of dogs, I'm really scared of them. So, uh, holiday makers sit on the beach with dogs. Elderly ladies push little dogs in prams. Caravan, caravaners tie dogs to their steps outside. And campers sleep on the beach with their dogs. Dogs on the beach, little ladies pushing them. Dogs going for walks and they sleep on the caravaners as well. 
lots of dogs if you think yeah if you go for a walk in woodlands if you go for a walk even in your local area i'm always in trouble for being late for school i have to cross the road so many times to avoid passing too close to a dog dogs 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 everywhere there's a dog <clears throat> then one summer day was the worst thing that happened my mum invited me Invited my cousin Joe and his puppa, puppy Lola to stay. Joe's bringing his puppy to stay, says his mum. No, 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 they can't stay. So he's already beginning to worry. That fear's creeping in. He doesn't really know and trust dogs at all. Even though he's not had a bad experience. The night before they arrived, I dreamt about Lola. I dreamt that Lola bit me. What's wrong, says his mum. Lola bit me, she's got huge drooling fangs. He's always just had a dream about it, but sometimes dreams can feel like reality. In the morning, I felt sick and I had to stay in bed. They can't come, I'm too ill, I'm much too ill for them to come. When Joe knocked on the door, my heart beat louder than the knocker. No dogs allowed. It's only Lola. Luckily, Lola was in a travel crate. So Joe left her for a bit and we went out to play until a huge dog tried to get our ball. He's only playing. It bit me. Make it go away. So um, I'm on this page. So there's a different dog here. So he's, he's scared now because another dog wanting to interact. Do you think that dog wanted to bite him or was he actually playing? That afternoon, I took Joe rock pooling. We found a big crab. Joe screamed and Lola popped her head out of his T-shirt. <clears throat> she had been with us all along. So Lola must be a teeny weeny weeny puppy because we didn't really know. So the crab, to me, is more scarier at the moment than the dog. But yet, Joe didn't realise Lola was there as well. Wow. Look! Now that's what I call scary. So do you know what? Joe's not scared. Sorry, not Joe. Ronnie's not scared of the crab. But he's scared of Lola, a very small puppy. It's interesting, we've all got different thoughts about what's scary and what's not. That evening, he's going to bed, Ronnie's going to bed. After that, Lola just hung out with us, which was okay, as long as she didn't touch me. At night, Lola slept on Joe's bed. But on the last night, I woke up to find Lola lying on my feet. My heart was racing. We stared at each other, then Lola rolled over and went back to sleep. I actually fell back asleep too with a dog on my bed. Even though it says dog free zone, it's got a dog. I felt really proud when I woke up the next day and quite sad that Joe was leaving. I think that getting to know Lola bit by bit made, it, made me realize that I could handle my fear. My heart still pounds when I see enormous dogs, but I don't run away. And I haven't been late for school for six weeks, which is definitely a runny record. I suppose you can bring Lola next time you visit, he says to Joe. Thanks. I think that I think she's pleased to hear that. So look how small Lola is. But yeah, he was happy to pick up the crab. The crab's got pincers and bitey things as well, yeah. So it's an interesting story, this, because fear shows up differently for all of us. So some of you might be scared of spiders, some of you might be afraid of uh, heights, some of you might be afraid of the weather. Maybe you don't like the wet, the rain, maybe you don't like the thunder. But this story is telling me that sometimes, little by little, we can become more familiar with things. So if you've got a particular fear about an animal, maybe look at some books of things, Maybe look at some videos, find out information about them. And this is where parents need to get on board. We didn't see much parenting going on in this story to help with the dog. 
um, but introducing a parent um, talking about their experiences, showing the different type of breeds that there are, becoming familiar. And we're not going to lose that fear altogether. It's still going to be there because it's inbuilt into us. We were born as um, cavemen, human, outdoor people. We were born to have that um, fight, flight and freeze situation because we had danger. We had to survive. So it's a natural instinct for us to have fear. So what is your fear? What steps can you take to help your children with their fears as well? Um, so it's looking at the whole picture and it's definitely about introducing those fears gently. And not to save the skirt of the dark, turning the lights off, maybe having a lamp in the room, working with your child to help resolve that fear. Merlin, does that sound okay? Are you gonna come out today, Merlin? Okay, he says he's gonna take one eye out. He's not ready to look at you fully yet. But maybe when I finish talking, you might feel a bit more comfortable talking and being on camera. So everybody wants to be on camera, do they? Not like having a picture taken. So that is Merlin's Magical Story Time this week. It's from the book, Fantastic Book of Feelings by Marcia Williams. Thank you, Marcia. And Merlin's book and my book is coming out, or should be out by now, The Merlin's Magical Journey, The, Rain, uh, the Rose Garden. It's a mindful, interactive book all about fear, perfectly lined up here. And there are some practices, emotional resilience regulation practices in that book to help you and your children work with the fear. Um, and it's something that you can pick up again and again, help to instill those tools so that it continues into adulthood as well. Um, I'm sure there was something else I was going to say. If you are wanting to purchase that, check out the comments below. If you want to go on the wait list if I've not already released this. Um, but it's a, a book aimed at children age four to eight years old. It is amazing. Merlin, you get, you're going to you famous, Merlin. You kind of have to be seen sometimes. Are you ready to come out? Okay, he's took his mask off. He's took his mask off. And he's got a message. Oh, what's your message? He says, please, can you share a donation? Buy Louise and Merlin a coffee at the Kofi link below. If you appreciate the content that I'm sharing it would be most welcome to help me provide more content. Check out my website, peaceandpresence.co.uk. There's more emotional resilience and family tool, toolkits there for you to access from meditations, the story, um, to resources to help your children manage their emotions themselves with your support. It's all about connecting parents and children together and helping you have happy, um, joyful family lives so that you can cope with life challenges with more ease. See you all next time. Bye.